Good evening, all respected principal, madam, chief patron of today's webinar, Dr. Konamuni Mukherjee, convener of the webinar, our librarian, sir, Mr. Deep Jyoti Kaur, our chief guest of the session, Dr. Robi Shankar Giri, assistant professor, residency university, Kolkata, India, Professor Seema De, Associate Professor, Department of English, Dr. Joyshi Drash, Convener of the NAC Committee, and all our colleagues, friends, dignitaries, and beloved students joined today's webinar. As per the, as we all know, as per the initiative taken by our state government regarding the observation of the students week throughout the state, our college has also participated in this venture and also arranged the program for the same starting from 2nd of January 2024 to 8th of January 2024. Today is the sixth day and today's topic is on digitization of library. Actually, digitization of library is a need of the hour. If we go 20 years back, Library was considered the place where various books, journal, articles, manuscripts, and other documents were kept in hard copies. We used to go to the library, read, and borrow books. All were made in physical mode. We were not at all accustomed with the word soft copy. But today, due to advancement of technology, modernization, and changing scenario, we have shifted the physical mode to online mode. And not only shifted, we are uh, keeping the online mode along with the physical mode. To me, digitization of library is the process of converting library resources in machine-readable manner. Presentation and preservation of library resources to offer quick access for any kind of users and researchers, students are the main goals of this digitization process. Actually, it helps to reduce paper usage, save storage space, and improve collaboration uh, among all the stakeholders related with the library system. With these few words, I would like to request the convener, our librarian, sir, to take the charge of the session. Okay, Divda, please take the charge. Good evening. Welcome, everyone. I am Sri Deep Jyoti Kaur, librarian, Chittoranjan College, Kolkata. We are excited to host today's webinar in Digitization of Library, organized by IQSC Chitranjan College and NAC Committee of Chitranjan College. I shall be convener, moderator for today. And I now invite our esteemed principal, Madam, Dr. Kodamoni Mukherjee, to say a few words. Dr. Kodamoni Mukherjee has joined our college as principal quite recently in fact just before the christmas holiday dr mukherjee was previously associate professor hod department of physics at habra situated college west bengal india we are honored to have her as principal thank you madam I now invite you to take over the mic. Please, madam. Thank you, sir, convener, sir. Good evening to everyone. Welcome to all of you to this webinar. Thank you to our convener, sir, for your well introduction of me. Now we are conducting students observation week in our college, Chitranjan College. This is a great opportunity to me to be a part of this webinar immediately after my joining to this college. I always welcome the modern technology and highly appreciate the selection 
of the topic of today's webinar as it is very relevant to this time also much useful and beneficial to students as well as faculties proper library facility is an asset of a college and next is its maintenance digitization can not only make it easier but also give a prompt way to search any book or reference within a fraction of second but to make it there are multiple challenges and various ways and we get some idea to overcome these challenges to implement from today's lecture of our eminent speaker we are very much privileged to get this chance to be enriched about this so now let's enjoy this opportunity welcome and thanks to our honorable speaker on behalf of our college once again for his gracious presence managing his precious time thank you thank you madam dr koramani mukherjee for your beautiful words i now invite professor shima roy bindal associate professor department of english chitranjan college to give him the welcome address thank you dipjyoti hello and a very very good evening to all present here today i am professor seema ray associate professor department of english chitranjan college kolkata west bengal it gives me immense pleasure to welcome each and every one of you present here our esteemed principal madam teachers students staff members and esteemed speaker you are brainstorming session um a uh, storming one day webinar on digitization of library being organized by chitranjan college nac and iqac cell under students observation week it is a first of its kind and we would like to express a heartfelt thanks to our principal madam dr konamani mukherjee for allowing this opportunity to hold this kind of webinar on the use of technology in the library a subject quite close to our dear librarian sri deep jyoti kaur especially and who has been vociferously fighting for the same to be implemented since long before we get started let me throw some light on the purpose of organizing this one day webinar the upsurge in technology has revolutionized our lives the ever increasing concern for maximizing the output and minimizing waste has been a matter of discussion all over the world to meet the tremendous information explosion and high demand for it libraries are now taking the advantage of digital technology in diverse fields such as education science culture development health governance etc and today we have invited esteemed speaker dr ravi shankar giri to enlighten us on this topic a big hearty welcome to you sir and thank you for graciously accepting our invitation dr ravi shankar giri is an avid academic researcher and an ardent open access protagonist working as assistant librarian at presidency university kolkata west bengal india he received his masters degree in agriculture chemistry and soil science and subsequently associate sips in information science from csir nis cair new delhi he was awarded doctorate phd from the university of calcutta he worked as in charge periodicals and databases in the institute of defense studies and analysis new delhi the premier think tank in india's defense studies and international relations under ministry of defense dr ravi shankar giri then joined the times of india new delhi as head of digital and image archive under his initiative the entire archive of times of india since 1851 was digitized and made online he later joined guru gobind singh in the basta university new delhi and became the in charge of library automation and digital archive his research interests center on research communication and evaluation system open science and information systems his notable contributions in scientometry studies include number 1 detection of recitations as one of 
the citation manipulating factors published in ASLIB Journal of Information Management, Emerald Impact Factor 2.2 in 2019. And second, developed a new citation indicator, Active Visibility Index, that can potentially lessen the effect of citation optimizing factors published in Cytometrics. Springer impact factor 4.02 in 2021. Apart from this, Dr. Ravi Shankar Giri has also published a number of articles in highly reputed WOS and Scopus index journals in the area of information science. Dr. Giri is also a regular reviewer of top tier journals in information science like Scientometrics, Colnet Journal of Scientometrics, IEEE, Access, etc. He is also associated with some of the prestigious gold OA journals in information science from Global South. Dr. Giri is a member of ISI, ISSI, sorry, Society, CU Leuven, Belgium, honorary life member of LIS Academy, Bangalore. Dr. Giri has developed, uh, delivered several invited lectures in many national and international seminars and workshops, such as the Geneva Workshop and you know, on Innovations in Scholarly Communications, LISA, CON, 2020. Where, I mean, it's quite an awesome scholarly record, I must say. And so, without further ado, I invite Dr. Ravi Shankar Giri to take over the stage and do the honors. Thank you, sir. Dr. Giri. Uh, uh, th thank you, madam. Uh, good evening to all, uh, respected uh, principal, madam, respected uh, faculty members, uh, respected librarian sets, and the dear students who are listening to this program. I am very much honored to present my topic on the digitization of library. So first, we want to understand why the library actually need the digitization or application of uh, ICTs. So, uh, can you see my presentation? Not yet, sir. I have uh, just... Now, is it visible? No. No, sir. Not yet. Just... Now, this is showing the sharing of screen. Just a second. Uh, is it okay now? Yes, it is okay, sir. Yes. Okay. My topic is that uh, role of information technology in the library management in digital era. So. Now we want to see what is the actually information space or the library space that contains the learning resources. The learning resources in the library, it's amalgamation of different type of resources. Like we have, we are not like the uh, libraries of the USA or any advanced Western countries. We have clean resources. Sometimes we have the uh, subscribed e-resources, means the resources we in the library, we subscribe for that one. We have now, due to open access movement, we get a lot of open access e-resources. From these different kind of survey, uh, resources, we have to provide the service. And what is the situation? The situation is like that one information overload nowadays according to the worldwide websites that 5.52 billion pages 
as of 6 January 2024. And Google Scholar indexes 389 million records. Why I have emphasized on the Google Scholar indexes? Because Google Scholar index those papers which are scholarly. Means like journal article or the scholarly presentation or the conference papers, books, etc. And in this from this situation, there is another phenomenon nowadays that is called the information pollution, information overload and the pollution. There are number of predatory open access journal. Predatory means they seems to be like a journal, but they do not maintain any scholarly review system for that one. You just uh give some money they will publish the paper that's why nowadays ugc uh, uh, has given the ugc uh, journal list care journal list that you have to publish in this journal otherwise you will not get for the career advancement planning then another is that so much information is there getting a pinpointed information is a very much difficult so, and what the user expects, user expects that we should get the information just instantly. Whenever he needs, he needs uh, the information, he wants to get the information instantly. If you do not provide, they will hook on the Google, they will hook on the uh, Bing and now it is everyone knows the chat GPT is there. He will type that one and get the information. But, but it is very difficult for an user to understand which is the authentic and the relevant information. They may assess some relevancy, but whether this is authentic or not authentic they will hardly understand from a user's perspective because nowadays what happens uh, many of you have heard or not i do not know the paper mill factory paper mill factory means someone will write paper for you and they will publish just you have to pay they will publish in a scholarly journal and uh, there is a one database that is called the retraction was database if, you, if anyone uh, see that one, you will see that the uh, top tier journal, uh, principal madam is from the physics. He maybe knows that uh, Hinduai publication, Inspire publication. Hinduai published so much conference paper on the physics. And you could not believe that 30,000 paper has been retracted because of this uh, uh, paper mill uh, factory. The experiment uh, has not been carried out, but they have published all everything. Just look like that these are the authentic research. So this kind of information pollution is too much. In this scenario, how do user expect? The user expect that whether I am traveling, whether I am reading in the library or whether I am uh, just uh, lying on the bed, I want to get the information instantly but the question is that how would we provide the challenges comes to the library and how would we provide that authentic information to the end user at real time so we need the adaptation of the new technologies and the upcoming technologies so from that perspective from a library management perspective, what are the functions we do? Actually, uh, sometimes faculty members or the others may not understand what are the actually challenges uh, or what are type of uh, management activities done in the library. So management of administrative activities. Administrative activities means that suppose principal madam no, uh, or any uh, faculty member need a book instantly then we have to he may be knowing he or she may be knowing that only the title and the author we have to search the books 
whether it is available in the market or not second in the local market who who will give the deliver the book and then we have to place the order then we have to check also whether the book is available in the library or not actually traditional system in the traditional system we have to check and means the card catalog system in the earlier days you have to check one by one my own experience in the presidency university has told that we have purchased means four copy uh, four or six copies of the rubindra rachanavali that is around 32 volume because the problem is that they hardly find through the catalog the whether the book is available in the library or not so going browsing through these catalogs means whether the book exists or not not in the library collection it is very difficult but for the if we automate the library with the recent software library management software just in a second we can by searching through the uh, library open we can uh, check whether the book is available and what edition is available. Sometimes you need the updated edition, but that could not be possible. So, if we do not do the library automation, that we the cost matter will be there. Will be that re, money reinventing the money reusing the same thing. That will be the we can save the cost by through the library management. Through the live uh, through taking the software then another is that uh, providing service to the print collects from the print collection sometimes students come to know that we need a uh, just uh, sir can we can you tell me that uh, nuclear uh, nuclear uh, fission uh, which book will be give a very better exposure or which book is good sometimes it's very difficult for the librarian to understand that uh, which book is good but if we have the library automation then there is some books that is dedicated to the uh, nuclear uh, system so from that one we can check that which book actually issued by the students on that one and sometimes with the interaction we could come to know that for the nuclear reaction uh, thing we could get that this book is good Another is that uh, nowadays everything is, uh, even the books are now the digitized one. So in case of the digitization collection, we have the in-house collection, subscribed and the open access information. In-house collection, sometimes some library do in-house some digitization work and for that one and they also subscribe some that and the open access resources. So we have to provide the service from the print based collection as well as the electric, uh, electronic and digital collection. And sometimes uh, the management, the students need that expected service as a resource person. And another thing is that in the there are so much information on the web and it is whether it is authentic or not it is very difficult for the for an user for a, especially for the new user to understand the authenticity of the information so they need the resource literacy and where it is available they need also that one and also the what kind of tool may be used for example i need a a uh, topic that how graphene helps in the uh, making the uh, solar power battery so uh, i could search on the google as a new user but with is it uh, worthy to search on the google as a librarian i can tell that no, you do not search on the Google, rather you search in the Google Scholar. When I am very, uh, then I can tell her, no, you do not search that one. Suppose you need for the research purpose, then I will tell that, no, you search on the dimension, you search on the lens, 
if you do not have the access to scopus or wave of science because they are the um, authority in these areas so this kind of resource literacy tool literacy is very much important and librarian has to play the role in this area so what are the tools we used in the library for providing service everything first and foremost the library automation is needed minimum basic uh, purpose for management of in-house activities and services we need an automation system or software this is the first basic condition and in the marketplace there are proprietary software and the open access software proprietary software like Lipsys, Slim++, VTLIS, etc are there. As an open access software, op open source software, that is the Koha, New Genlib, which are there. And my experience told that in West Bengal library, they do not get enough, enough fund uh, to use the proprietary software like Lipsys. Because in presidency, when I joined in the 2014, earlier that time was the college actually, the, that is the government college, from the government college to it has been transferred to the as a university. So librarians are there. They tried for the Lipsis, but the cost of the Lipsis is that for an university system, Oh, and we, since uh, we are in a, um, our collection is uh, too much, more than uh, 2 lakhs, the Lipsis told that 15 lakhs for the installation purpose, for the, uh, for initial functioning, initial implementation. Then 10%, 12.5% is the annual AMC, annual maintenance charge. There are uh, eight meetings, eight to ten meetings there. Every time uh, people hide for the lipsis. Uh, then I have some little bit expertise on the new gen lip, another open source software. When I saw that after several meetings, it, it cannot be implemented. So 2016, what I did, I did a small database of in the new gen lip and then presented to the vice chancellor madam. Vice Chancellor, Madam told that, okay, data security part is okay, then you can go ahead. Go ahead with around uh, 30,000 books, first you do, and after that you check. Then what is the problem? Then we can think about that one. So then we can go ahead with the new journey and we have implemented it. And nowadays, uh, our uh, OPEC is on the internet anyone can see anytime in 24 into 7 and we have around 1,35,000. Similarly, the Koha is there. Koha is also good, but uh, since I have the expertise at that time in the New Zealand, I do not have much expertise or the confidence to take everything on my own uh, because it is a very large system. Need the server, need that uh, database maintenance every, every now and then because sometimes uh, I can give you some example what kind of challenges in the automation software during uh, corona period most of the time the library was closed in some uh, due to lightning one day server crashed but then uh, and then we do not know about that one after uh, when the university opened just uh, in 2021 uh, February, perhaps they told that the that server gas or what will happen. Luckily, I have saved the backup just uh, two days before uh, the library closed and take it in a virtual uh, drive because I could not come to the library every day. Very realistic, sir. So from home, I have to, I take the VPN service and 
install we install after that we take around 15 days to rectify everything for that one so implementing open source software in the library needs some expertise on that one other than that in case of the koha another automation software the advantage is that if you implement koha what will happen there are several service provider because it is an open source software if i know the koha very well i can uh, open a company and i could tell that i will provide the service so when you take the open source software the advantage is that one there are you should not have to go to the particular vendor because if you take a ellipsis or any other thing then you have to go to the vendor particular the developer of the ellipsis and whatever they will ask for the amc you have to take otherwise you will be uh, lose the amc and after some days the system will crash and you will not able to recover all this data in the back end but in case of the open source software there are several vendors in uh, in west bengal it is very much popular the koha so if you implement that software you can uh, take the service from different kind of vendors for in, uh, for example uh, west bengal that uh, there are several vendors they provide that one. another technological advantage so when your basic automation has been done then you need to some security management system because books are precious sometimes barcoding of the books rfid technology surveillance system these are the three things that is mainly used in the library so rfid technology because some books are very much rare if some students uh, take the book and did not return to the a that will be a problem and sometimes you know the students will come and they will take uh, inside the sat if the book is very important then it is and you will not get the books then after that one another the, the next step is that to make some institutional repository institutional repository in, institutional intellectual outputs even the annual reports or the news uh, news a item or the news uh, things that you can put on the institutional newsletter you can in-house newsletter you can prepare for that one or departmental activities even the uh, eminent teachers lectures you can keep on that one institutional repository on there then you have print resources for the print resources you do the library automation and institutional for the in-house knowledge activity you uh, did in the digital a uh, dispace then you have the open access resources and you have the subscribe resources sometimes you will get that uh, like in list you could get that uh, consortium based access then these are the information areas where when a user come they will feel some cumbersome because everyone in the google what is the google like search is very much popular just in a simple box you give type anything and wherever that is available that will show so they expect that okay library should provide the information in such a way so for that one uh, discovery tool is there ebsco discovery services uh, by ebsco someone actually for the college library very few college library in india they use that one but university system they use that one, this discovery service because they have lot of subscribed resources even they have the for the research purpose there are so many uh, journals are there so open access journal that they use the discovery system someone is there someone from proquest and the open access the viewfind uh, software there federated search or one st uh, stop search they are there and then the subject portal so you do not have that uh, so much money to invest on that one or so much expertise like viewfind which is an open source software then you can invest on the as a subject portal we could make the subject portal these are the things we can implement in the 
library and for during corona time what is going everyone wants the information from his house we have an uh, researcher who needs uh, who publishes during corona time around 80 papers in top tier journals so he needs the information uh, from home this especially the bioscience uh, uh, people they need the information sometimes the humanities uh, people they want the jstor from house so remote access is the another tool that is very much needed in today's area so we have the vpn connection many use different virtual private network through which we can access anything from our university uh, uh, ip based access then sometimes they nowadays uh, people use they have whatever their query they have to just use the whatsapp otherwise library have virtual reference tool is there question point from oclc mebo is there we have implemented at that time the mebo so that we can uh, give the to the service uh, to the virtual reference instantly we can give the service it is like the whatsapp but it is dedicated for the library then nowadays the in uh, new education policies they are everyone has to uh, in the last year they have to some research project like that one so they need to understand what is the research tools to where they will start for that one so we have we should know that what are the research tool we can use the uh, for the students we have the cymago cymago is that suppose any uh, fourth year students wants to publish a uh, article in the journal he doesn't know which journal is suitable for that one and i have to just give a feedback that please search the cymago you will do that one then he does not know the citation style how to uh, do a citation style or uh, how to manage the references mainly mainly is for uh, special purpose for that one and it is an open access now free access i do not tell the open access but it is a free access then orsit is one of another thing we have to tell the student about that orsit is a unique identity for any researcher and those who are especially those who are from the science they if they want to publish in a top tier journal nowadays they need the orsit for uh, getting a research paper so not only publishing the things you have to increase your own visibility so research gate is there and sometimes open review we use and the how do you make popularize the library activities and services for that one we use we have to use the social web so for the social web we use different type of things blog blog blogspot use collaborative project we use wikipedia bookmarking for the content communities we use the youtube sometimes lectures when students give the uh, teachers give the lecture they can record on the youtube uh, they can record it and load upload in the youtube and they will tell that uh, student please see that one though in the college education we have seen very much less but uh, if you ask uh, the coaching system nowadays especially the physics wala uh, or the everyone upload their youtube and do the lectures and that will be seen by the students itself so use of the social web is very much important so in case of the library also we do that role library plays an important role in the also content uh, uh, provider as a content provider because they can uh, teacher will give the lecture and they will record that one that will be placed on the youtube and library provide the link library have a very much role in these areas now what is the advantage of doing these things then this is a website that when we do the library automation what will be the benefit we can get so if we search the book then 
now it is the facility that the book cover will be there along with the google preview the preview helps the students what are the content pages that will help them to understand another a is that one the, uh, generally teachers my earlier days teachers uh, when i used to in the honors course chemistry honors course in the saint paul saint paul's have a very good library and saint paul cathedral mission the nearby your college so my teacher used to tell me that go to the library and browse the self rack when we go to the library suppose i need the uh, chemistry wheeler books or the uh, i have finars books finars organic chemistry but when i go to the library in the shelf i could see that now finar is there but there are some other solomon's books is there other books are there which are very good books so i can come to know what are the good books in the or what are the related books available in the library so now it is the system is so much advanced that they can show you the virtual self so similar items suppose i want this books so what are the similar items available in the library and due to ai system that has been implemented and the different kind of analytic system they could better project which is the most related book that based on the terms of use and also that uh, content that is the interactive open. not only that one in this they can do that one that suppose a student issued that book, he can write a comment on the book. Even the teacher in the web back, he can log on and read that this is a good book for this purpose. That will help the students to find what is good and what is not good. So library automation helps in a very, uh, in a certain extent to find the most relevant in an easier way. Then nowadays, that Shodganga, that is not for the college, but uh, those who have to do the PhD and also nowadays the coming that even the uh, last year thesis for the dissertation students come, that will be, that have to be uploaded on the digital repository. And India, we have that uh, Shodganga thesis and the library. And this is the most important for the college, actually, that is the national Enlist. Enlist provide a number of ebooks and some journals for the colleges. And the college administrator can do log on and provide the access, create the accounts for the teachers and the prospective researchers. And that will be available. They can access from anywhere. That is another conscious access. Then the open access e-resources is another important area because nowadays there are so many open access resources and we have to by making the library web page we have to guide the students that which are the good books there are different kind of even the uh, scholarly textbooks for the uh, actually textbook and uh, usa there are 160 uh, universities they collaborate with textbook for the graduate students sometimes their content may not be relevant everything relevant to us but some suppose this chapter will be good for this uh, subject for this topic that can teacher can actually uh, di uh, direct the students they please uh, go through this book this is an open access book intake open is there for the physics that is very much very good resources so there are uh, there are librarians should provide a guide proper guide system for the open access resources we have in our university we have got the, not only e journals e archive e thesis we have what are the e books on the different subjects what are the a we have made some guide actually i have uh, that is made by me and actually i have copied from some western universities and 
after consultation with the uh, teachers, we have made that one. And another thing is the open course where open course where MOOC is very much important. Now it is SOM platform is there, but MIT open course where and our NPTEL that has been made video lectures available through the web and for different subjects they have taken they have made the video of the best experts from india and it is very much popular and nowadays the credit also can through the swam platform one can do that one and get the credit for that one and can add in the uh, their results also then there are since it is going to be the NEP system, you need in the last year, they have to do some uh, research work. So we have to make some guide for the tools for the researchers. So library, when we do the proper design of the library website, library automation, we can do that one. Then that is the general resource type. Then we have to make that now proper guide for the subject guide. How do students Suppose a chemistry student want information, where actually they should uh, search. That is the important much making library web page is one of the another important area that needs to be taken care of. Then this is the search gateway I have uh, shown. And another important is that we used to tell the students are not coming actually in the library. Actually, they also make it do not know what is available in the library so we have to take the proactive steps to make them aware that this is uh, uh, this comes to the library so we can use that one it is my earlier institution where i have used this uh, facebook systems that these books have come please come to the uh, library so i have based on this uh, use of the Facebook because this is what this was the one experimental uh, step. I uh, have seen that one that after giving on the Facebook, people used to come. Okay, I need this one. I please. Um, they come easy, um, instantly. They come in in most of the cases, and especially during the summer season, they are very much interested into the storybook because this uh, Indraposta University is mainly that. Uh, technology area they are uh, involved where technology related courses are there so they very much needed this communication skill and the story books they used to come when i put that one on the library i used to i saw that within one week all these uh, new books have been in most of the cases new books have been issued so we have to take the proactive steps through the social media then this type of things we can we have used to use the blog. Uh, this is uh, my uh, university earlier university that we have used for that so that students can different tools I have to use so that they can ever that these books are come to the library. We need to go that one. So there are uh, scholarly blogs are there. Everything is there, and then in the line. How do you use the Facebook? You know, what kind of study materials you need so that we can uh, in, uh, generate interest among the students about the library uh, collection. Then there are e-learning portals are there. We have to uh, make the students aware that these are the e-learning portals and they are these type of courses that like NPTEL and uh, MIT course are there so you can see the lecture from that one suppose I do not this professor I do not understand that lecture from this professor because whatever uh, she has developed I could not understand there are alternatives you can uh, point out that these lectures available there on this topic these lectures are available there you can just see that one that will improve your understanding maybe so before i conclude i just want to show the, what actually others are doing uh, this is one of the library uh, do you see that one
this screen is uh, visible no, to sir, you? No, sir. No, sir. Not yet. It is visible. Now, now it is visible. Visible. Now it is visible. Yes, yes, yes. 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 So here you see that book cover are there. So this sometimes oh, what is the importance of the book cover? So students actually uh, when we will browse to the uh, A, they will actually that oh this book is there. So they can easily identify the book in the self and that uh, not only that one a single this is a Falvey Memorial Library they have used the viewfind actually they are the developer of the A. They have they did this uh, thing. So not only the books, the articles and what are the even they have the virtual librarian. They have actually they, their system is too much developed. They have a subject librarian for every uh, two, three subjects. For example, they have the sociology, criminology, history and thesis. They have that. We do not have that one. But we can try a little bit that this, these are the areas you can, uh, if you put some question, we can answer that one. That's another thing. In our presidency, what we do? Suppose one wants to the front of physics. So in the library website, then where should, should he should he start? The start he will start at the the you can uh, for the astrophysics astronomy you can start NASA ADS systems. It is very visible. Or one can start with the ARXIV. Or if you are looking for the high energy physics, you can search the Inspire database. So we can guide. This is a, this is actually real time. Uh, I have so I am showing so that they can guide that these are the things we can do that one. And so, similar research guide. We have similar research guide, general guide that where he can actually start. I will request everyone to visit that one, but this will be updated now because of the NAC so will come. We are updating that one so that we could be uh, very much uh, giving to the not the dead link like that one. So that if you want to assess in the journal articles or author influence, go to that one. If you uh, want bibliographic management, you go there. Uh, either use the mainly or the Jotero, which is free one. And that there are for the chemistry, Kmworks is there, Jabref is there. Or you need a citation management tool. How do you do the, that one? Or how do you cite that one? That is the OWL, Pardew Online Writing Lab. We generally guide that one. Through this system, we try to help the uh, students so that they can come and they do not feel that library is a fossil fuel, a fossil uh, place. So in this way, we have tried to provide the uh, system. Here we in our system, this is our New Zealand interface. Here we show that this is the book with the uh, this is the real time. So if you need from the structural geology, you will get these are the other books available in the library. So in this way, we try to provide, but we need to update. There are so many things that there. Nowadays, that uh, AI ML technology has been uh, so much advanced that even they can recommend from the uh, Google also. These are the good books for that one. That is very much helpful for the book selection uh, purpose. As well as for the students that they can get that some open access book from that one that will be very much helpful because in our uh, West Bengal not all students are from the actually rich background sometimes because the cost of the book is so much that we can guide to them that these are the good books available in the library. So at the end I conclude that actually library automation is very much needed and there are different aspects we need to uh, we need to take care of for the library automation first we have to choose the when you choose choose the software we need to understand different dynamics uh, first of all is that we need to a server we need a uh, good internet connection a, a lan should be there and then if we when we go for a open source software there are some technical persons may be needed 
but nowadays what happened uh, virtual cloud service is providing for example avior is providing uh, informatics india they have cloud service you don't have to invest much on the uh, your infrastructure just they will provide the system and you will be the administrator you will just enter the data that will reduce your cost but the, your amc will be little bit high for that one but if you have the one time uh, a uh, grant then you can choose your uh, server you can purchase your server but maintaining the server and everything because nowadays server is means the storage system is uh, updating so so fast earlier the hdd was there now the ssd now even it is it has been told that uh, by within five years this how hdd or hdd hdd is not uh, will not be there everything will be the virtual so we can choose the virtual system also there for that one we can uh, choose a uh, vendor and do that one so that the maintenance part of the library automation we do not have to do we can take the regular uh, backup they will also do we could take that library backup daily and uh, keep your uh, keep our uh, own uh, computer and they will also keep so if something happens then we update uh, up again update that one so choosing the library software that is that what kind of mode will be taken that is one another is the cost what is the cost that is the true uh, cost allocated and service who provide the immediate service suppose some problem is there because when you move to the catalog system or the library uh, digitized system then uh, your car catalog will not be there means even for uh, i have the experience in the peak hour peak hour means after that before the lunch students used to come in a shock and they we need this book we need this book and at that time if the server do, uh, does not uh, provide means not functioning in much way then it will be the problem so we need the backup system also there they are so that we have to concern that how much bandwidth uh, we need for that one these are the technical things we need that one then that library should uh, also make the uh, dynamic library web page so that provide the uh, resource guide as well as the information literature guide nowadays we are planning uh, means we have uh, just started even the job sites someone wants to get the uh, higher education because the college system from the university system they will means in our cases in maximum the graduation students ug students they go to the pg for elsewhere they uh, in presidency very few students are there means those who uh, did the uh, ug uh, they continue the PG because their aspiration is different. We can uh, guide them where they can just giving the link, the scholarship, everything is there. Job sites, what are the job sites? Even we are conducting the EPSC uh, seminar uh, for that one means uh, for the IAS preparation, uh, inviting the lecture uh, resource person for that one. So that we can go for the job sites also, we can give them the link so that this can be helpful and for the students and students can come to the library. Thank you. I uh, thank you, thank you for giving me that. I have just shared. If anyone have any question, please, uh, I'll try to provide some explanation for that one. Thank you, sir, Dr. Ravi Shankar Giri, for your valuable words of the present scenario. Next, I now invite Dr. Jayasri Das, co-ordinator, NAC committee of Chitranjan College, to take over the mic. Please, madam. Thank you, Dibda. Good evening, everyone. Yes. Yes, you are audible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Especially our esteemed principal, Dr. Konamoni Mukherjee, and distinguished speaker, Dr. Dobi Shankar Giri. I, Dr. Joyashree Das, am sincerely grateful for your presence and engagement during today's insightful talk on library digitization. 
my heartfelt thanks to dr robi shankar giri for shedding light on how technology transform libraries fostering innovation and global knowledge exchange specially acknowledgement for his dedication in making today's webinar a grand success let's uphold library values for accessibility and inclusivity shaping a future where information knows no bounds thank you thank you all and now i invite our librarian mr dipjyoti kaur for further insight thank you thank you dr jayashri das for your precious words now i invite dr shukhada gangopadhyay hod of commerce and coordinator nac iqac to give the vote of thanks thank you dipta for giving me the opportunity to convey the formal vote of thanks i would like to thank our principal ma'am for responding to the government initiatives and arranging the program for observation of the students week i would like to convey my heartfelt thanks to our chief guest dr robi shankar giri for his insightful presentation and deliberation we are very much honored to have you with us sir i would also like to offer my sincere thanks to the convener of today's session uh, mr dipjyoti kaur i would also like to thanks professor shima re for offering hearty welcome address i would also like to thanks dr joyshree das for her deliberation i would also like to acknowledge the support received from the technical team for so thank you dr ajit kumar das assistant professor department of hindi and mr rajesh kumar shah department of hindi lastly i would also like to thank all the participants colleagues friends dignitaries and students who have joined today's webinar for making it a grand success thank you thank you all and good night and i would like to hand over the mic to our convener mr deep jyoti kaur deep down thank you everyone for your participation and precious time you may all kindly leave okay so we are i'm leaving we are concluding okay. here today's session thank you all and good night all thank you everyone i am also leaving now very good session enlightening session Okay thank you I am I'm also leaving and thanks to all of you